Do you know all your scale shapes in every key? Well, in this lesson, I wanna work on our fundamental shapes, but seeing them actually from different vantage points and angles. We're gonna learn a little bit about the circle of fifths. And with my 12 key challenge, you're gonna have an exercise you can always use to work on all your scales in every key in just a few short minutes. But right now, what I'm getting at in a nutshell is that you might already know a scale, for example, like the E form scale. <laughs> This box shape, a lot of people, that's the first one that they learn when it comes to the major scale. That connects to this shape, which is something we could call the D form. But can you connect them both together and kind of see in between them like Paco de Lucia does in this scale run? He's connecting these two shapes together so we're not in this position or this position, we're in between them. Coming up with this 12 key challenge, we're gonna be able to see scales that way. So what the circle of fifths is, is our organizing wheel for key. So we start out at 12 o'clock at the top in the key of C, there's no sharps in the flats. As we go clockwise, we start adding sharps. So we're getting more and more sharps. We get down to six o'clock and things flip over to flat keys. We got a lot of flats, so we get fewer and fewer of them as we go clockwise until we get back to the key of C, and we're back to where we started. One of the values of doing this 12 key exercise that I'm gonna show you is it really gives you a more intimate understanding of what the notes are in every key and the relationship between keys and even the relationship between these scale shapes that you already know. Here are our rules. We're staying in the first position. We can never deviate from that first position. We're gonna use an open string whenever it's possible to use an open string. That's also gonna throw a monkey wrench into our vision of the scale. And also a very important part of this drill is don't stop. We're trying to go around the circle of fifths to every single key and never stop. And the value of that is it forces us to see the next shape on top of the shape we're already playing and kind of see them both at once. And that is key to improvising, but it really just helps you know your shapes better. Okay, the key of C open is gonna look like this. This is the C form major scale. We're going all the way up and down in each of these keys. Okay, now we're in the key of G. All of the Fs become sharp. It looks like this. Now notice how similar that is to the scale that we just played. I mean, the C form and the G form, you could say they're the same exact thing except for one note. And that's what I think is good to see the relationship between these and see how very similar they are as we go from key to key. We're only changing one note as we go from key to key on the circle of fifths. And so that's why the circle of fifths is a handy thing as a songwriter. The neighboring key clockwise and the neighboring key counterclockwise on the circle of fifths for any key that you're in is a key that is pretty similar to that original key and it gives you some other choices for chords you might use. And we see this all the time in the music that we play. Okay, so we're coming back down the G form. Now we could also call this, you may know that already as the open E minor scale, but in this video, we're only talking about the major scale roots and that's why we're giving them the names we are. So next key is the key of D, two sharps. Now all the C's become sharp and we can see how similar this shape is to the last one. All of our Fs continue to be sharp, so we can call that the D form major scale. If you don't have the circle of fifths in front of you when you're doing this exercise, uh, ultimately you're gonna memorize that. The key of D was the key we just played in, so just count to five from there. One, two, three, four, five. That's an A note, so now we're in the key of A, and that looks like this. We're getting into some tasty stuff here because you might not recognize that shape at all. The way that we learn our shapes is five discrete patterns and those patterns connect together. But when you're in between them, things can look pretty weird. And here, this has happened. So we're in the key of A. If I played the G form, like we saw earlier, we played it in the actual key of G. Now we're in the key of A, so that would occur here. So this is what our scale looks like there, but we're trying to stay in the first position. Well, where is our caged form in the first position in the key of A? It would be the A form but it's gone off the neck to a point where we can't really capture that shape anymore. So we're between two shapes. This is the value of this exercise. So we're trying to see the G form and the A form together. If we were doing that up the neck, it would look like this. Here's our A form. That connects always to the G form right here. Okay, but if we're going between them, it looks like that. And that's what this helps you see. This key of A is a common key for the guitar. And in flamenco, you see things like this. Phrases 
mm. like that. And so if you can see that hybrid scale shape, phrases like that really start to play themselves because you've eliminated all the wrong notes. So when you're reading the tab for something like that, no longer are the numbers just random numbers. You can actually put it into a context, into a pattern that you know, and you're gonna memorize it faster and you're gonna know it forever and you're gonna play it better. Next key on the circle of fifths is the key of E. We got four sharps in this one. All the D natural notes become D sharp. And remember, as we travel around the circle of fifths, we're keeping the notes that we had and we're just adding a new one. So when you're reading music and you see four sharps in a key signature, it's not four random sharps. It's always the same four sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. Just like the key of A, we're between two patterns now. We're in between the D form scale and the E form scale. It looks like this. Now that's exactly what I talked about earlier with that Paco de Lucia example. So we could play that here. So that is the same thing that we saw earlier up here in the key of A, only now we're in the key of E. And again, a pretty common guitar key, certainly in Spanish guitar. Check out this little phrase from an Alegrías by Paco Peña. Now we're in the key of B, all the A's are sharp. We got five sharps, looks like this. Notice how that sounds kind of interesting? That is the Lydian scale that you're hearing because it begins on E and we're hearing what we perceive at first to be the major scale, but then we have a raised fourth. So another cool thing about this exercise, at least up until we lose an E note, which is gonna happen in a minute, we hear the different modes. At the beginning of the song, we started on E, and here we're trying to travel across every single string with every single note in the key. We started in the key of C, and every time that we do this, we're starting, of course, on the low E, and that gives us the sound of the Phrygian mode. That's what that sounds like. And then the next key, we heard the Aeolian mode. If you know what modes are. And then we have the Dorian. Parent scale is the key of D. Then we have Mixolydian. And then we had the major scale, which is the Ionian mode. And now we're up to Lydian. And it's just kind of a cool study. That's not what this exercise really is about, but it's also another kind of avenue of exploration that you can do with this study because you can hear the modes. Okay, now we're almost halfway through the circle of fifths. We're down here in the six o'clock position, you could say. And now here we would go a perfect fifth from B. And what is that note? It's F sharp. But now we're gonna start giving them their flat names. So what's the flat name for F sharp? It's G flat. This key, we could give two names, F sharp or G flat, but we're gonna stick to G flat because now we're in flat key territory. This is the root of the major scale, but we're starting on every single note in the key. So this is the seventh note of the major scale here. We have now lost our open E. Came back to the root of the major scale there just because it sounds more pretty. That was the E4 major scale. And we're used to playing it though in a different way. I played an open string there because I could, and that's another part of our seeing the scale from a different angle kind of thing. So when you play the scale shape, it normally looks this way, where I play my pinky on this string, okay? But instead of doing that here, I went. Instead of playing my pinky right here, that is the same as the open string. So I'm just playing the open string. So that's another great visualization exercise. Okay, that was the key of G flat. Now we're gonna go up a fifth. And if you know what a power chord looks like, that's another way that we can find quickly a fifth, but we can also count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're in the key of D flat major. And by the way, every time that we reach that major scale root note, the new sharp or the new note or the note that's different in the new key is the one that's just to the left of that note, what we could call the seventh note of our new major scale. Now, if my pinky is on the fifth string, this is going to render the C form. So now we're actually back to where we started. And this is kind of crazy, but we're in a key that has a bunch of flats in it, as opposed to the key of C, which is a very simple key in terms of sharps and flats. But we're playing the C form again, only now it's in its movable form. It's actually an easier to see, more familiar way to perceive that scale, rather than when it goes open. When scales go off the neck, they get harder to see. Another great thing about this exercise. What we're ending up with here is there's 12 keys, but only five shapes. So we're able to see scales in different ways. So we're playing the C form scale pattern open, and now we're playing it not open. So we're getting the best of both worlds here in terms of all these different side angles and different views of the scale shape. From the key of D flat, it's this guy.
That's the C form. There's the note that would make it sound Phrygian, but the root of the scale is right there. Now a fifth from here, we can count to five, or we can find a power chord to determine that note, or we can go to the ceiling. That's another way to find a perfect fifth on all the strings except for the second string, because that string is tuned differently from the other. So if this is the key that we're in, D flat, go to the ceiling, A flat, that's our new key. So now the root of our major scale is on the sixth string. If my first finger were there, it would be the E form, but we gotta stay in the first position, so it's gotta be the G form. So now we're actually cycling through all those scale shapes that we started with, like I said, in the same order. This is the G form major scale in the key of A flat, which has four flats. Now we're in the key of E flat. The lowest E flat we can find on the guitar is right here. That must be then the D form. And now we have this shape. Those open strings whenever we can. Key of E flat. After E flat, let's find the next key by going to the ceiling. B flat. This is the A form. But we saw the A form open partially, right? We actually saw the A form up here too in the key of B. Now we're in the key of B flat. So we've seen this shape three different ways. There's three flats in this key. Now we only have one more key and we'll be back to C after this one. So going to the ceiling again, there's F, got our E form. We're gonna, we're gonna play a shape that we've already seen, but in a new way. Everything is natural here except the Bs are flat, so we can't play the open B string, of course. right there we are back to having an E natural note so now we get another one of our mode sounds if we went from E to this E in the key of F we would hear this and you might know that that is the Locrian mode let's run through this whole 12 key challenge now we'll have the diagrams on the screen and some other information I'll kind of talk through it as we go we're trying not to stop the whole way through starting in the key of C all the notes are natural the C form major scale pattern. Now all the Fs become sharp. We've got the G form pattern. There's F sharp. Keep all those Fs sharp and now the C's become sharp and we're in the key of D major now. Of A now, all the G's are sharp. This is kind of a hybrid pattern. Now we're in the key of E major. D sharp right there. There it is again. Key of B major, all the A's become sharp. flat keys. Okay, now the key of D flat. We're back to the C form pattern. After this, we got the key of A flat. Back to the key of C. I'm gonna make the B natural right there, and we're back. 
once you complete this exercise all the way through without stopping, there's a few different ways that we can level up with this. One of them would be to play, of course, just play it faster. And that is pretty hard to do because we're trying to see the next key on top of the one we're playing, the one that's coming up. That's really what we're gonna do when we improvise too. Like you're gonna be seeing a scale shape and maybe an arpeggio within that scale shape, but there's another chord coming and we kind of have to be ready visualizing that new arpeggio. So we're trying to see maybe even three things at the same time, our overall scale, the arpeggio we're playing right now, the arpeggio we're about to play, and maybe even the arpeggio that's gonna come after that. So this is really getting us into that way of conceptualizing things. Another way to up the ante on this exercise is once you have it pretty well all the way through, instead of going all the way up and down each key, go up one and down the next, like this. We're in the key of C. Got the C form here. When I get to the top, now I'm in the next key, the key of G. Okay, now here comes the, I'm in the next key, key of D. So that really makes you more quickly have to see that new key coming up. And a final way to take this exercise to the next level would be to identify every single note name as you go from key to key. Pretty hard to do. Just remember we have seven notes in our musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You're not allowed to say the same letter twice or to skip a letter. So for example, this note, that's a C sharp or D flat. It all depends on the context. If you were in the key of G flat major, as we talked about earlier, we have G flat, then A flat, B flat, C flat. You might not have known that there is such a thing as a C flat, but there is in this key because we have to include all of the letters in our musical alphabet here. So we had C flat and then we have D flat. So there's a case where that note would be D flat instead of C sharp. We kind of already knew that because it's a flat key, but if I were in the key of D major, we have E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Well, I have to say C because I can't skip it. So that's C sharp instead of D flat. And of course, if we're in the key of D, the letter D is already taken. I hope you like this video. Let me know if you can do this 12 key challenge. I do it all the time. And it's something that you can always use to work on your scales. And check out this playlist of improvisation loops where you can put these scales to use.